Hello everyone, welcome back to another coding challenge. Today we're going to be making a rain simulation type thing. Um, you can see it on the screen here, so let's jump into it. Okay, so I've got a processing sketch set up here. Um, it's just got the basic setup and draw functions in it, standard stuff, so let's get into it. The first thing that we're gonna do is we're just gonna set the size of the screen. So really basic, we'll set it to 1080 by 720, like that. And if we run this, we just get a blank screen, as you'd expect. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create little rain particles um, so we're going to add a new tab, which is essentially like a class, and we're going to call it drop, because there's going to be raindrops. Um, so we'll go class, drop, like this. And then we'll need a constructor function, so we'll say drop. So it's going to need um, an x and a y coordinate. And then we're also going to give it a depth thing, so that'll come into play a bit later on. So. I'll call that Z. Um, and we're going to have these stored as variables, so we'll put X, Y, and Z, and we're going to say this dot X equals X, this dot Y equals Y, and this dot Z equals Z. So this droplet's going to have to do a few things. It's going to have an update function so that we can update its position over time. And then we're also going to have a show function so that we can display it on the screen. So if we start with the, the show function, because that's a bit simpler. So we're just going to draw a little line on the screen where the drop is. So we're going to say, put a line at x comma y, and we'll say that the line goes to x and then y plus five or something like that. So we'll start with that. And so now if we just create a droplet here, so we go drop d equals new drop, and we'll say width on two, height on two, and then the z doesn't matter for this for the moment, so we'll say like 10 just because. And then if we say d dot show, we should see that in the middle of the screen we just get a little a little tiny line. So we yep, there's a there's a tiny line. I'm not sure if that'll show up on the recording, but there's a little black line right in the middle. So that's great. We've got a droplet. We might want to change the color to be blue, but we can easily do that a bit later. So the next thing we want to do is we want to have the drop falling down towards the bottom of the screen. Okay, so the um, the way we're going to do that is we're just going to add a little bit to the y position each time. So we'll say y equals y plus um, 4. <laughs> 4 seems like a good number. So if we run this now, it's not moving, but if we go into the draw function and we say d.show and then d.update, like this, we should see that the, ah, oh, I haven't declared this globally, so I'll need to do that. So drop D like this, and then D equals new drop. Just need to sort that out. And then if we run this, we should see, okay, so we get a line moving down, but because the screen's not clearing, it's not very obvious. So we'll say background, and we'll go with like 150, a light gray color. So if we run this, we get a little drop that goes down towards the bottom of the screen. So you'll notice that when it gets to the bottom of the screen, it disappears. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to make it just continue so that when it goes below the bottom of the screen, it gets teleported back up to the top so it can fall back down. So we'll say if y is greater than height, we'll, we'll put in a little buffer as well. So if it's greater than height plus 10, we'll say um, y equals negative 10. Okay, so 
when we run this we should see that when it gets to the bottom of the screen it'll teleport back up to the top and so now it's just going around in an infinite loop that'll just keep going round and round. So what we might want to do is instead of it just going to the top and falling down exactly where it is, um, we could move it to a random location along the width of the screen because it'll look a bit weird if, if we get a bunch of drops in there they'll all be falling at the same rate and they'll be coming down in the exact same way. So actually I'll show you that now. I'll make a drop array like this equals new drop and we'll say that there are a hundred drops like this and then we'll need a for loop to do this. So for and i equals zero i is less than drop dot length i plus plus um, and we'll say d at index i equals a new drop and so we want the x location to be a random position in the width and the y to be negative 10 seems good negative 10 and then the z we'll just give it a random value from 0 to 5 that'll come in handy later, trust me. Oh, I was using the wrong variable. <laughs> okay, and so then we're also going to need to do a for loop for showing it and updating it. So we'll just replace that like this and we'll say D I show and di.update. So now if we run this we should have a hundred drops on the screen and they're all falling at the same time and they're all going to come down in the exact same position. So it looks wrong. <laughs> okay, so what we're going to do to fix that is when it gets teleported back up to the top we're going to put x equals random width. Now it's still going to look wrong because they're all falling at the exact same um, same rate and they're all in a perfect line so it's still going to look a bit weird but you're not going to get the same clumps always being together hopefully yeah so they're moving around a bit but it still looks pretty not like rain so to fix this a little bit instead of just setting them to a random y value uh, to a fixed y value sorry we're going to change it to be a random y value so we're going to say random and we're going to put it in between negative 10 and 20 and then we're also going to change the rate that it falls based on this z value so if their z is smaller they're going to fall faster and if they're further away so their z is bigger they're going to fall slower so we'll say we'll make a variable called speed and we'll say map the z from 0 to 5 to be so if it's zero, it's really close. So we want it to be um, faster. So we'll say 10. And then if it's really far away, we'll say that it's got a speed of four. So then we'll say y equals y plus speed. And then when we're displaying it, we can also make the closer ones to be thicker. So we'll say stroke, stroke weight which is the thickness of the line, and we're going to map the z value again, so when it's between 0 and 5, and when it's 0 we want it to be a fat line, so we'll say, um, let's say like 10, and then when it's really far away we'll make it like 2. So now when we run this we should see something that looks a little bit more like rain. So there we go, after a few cycles through it's starting to look a lot more like rain. So when they're fatter, we might have to change, like when they're thick droplets, we might have to change how tall they are as well because they look more like circles than they do droplets. So to do that, instead of y plus 5 here, I'll make this its own variable. Like this. And we'll say, um, call this for thickness, we'll do like that, and then t times 2, so it's twice as long as it is wide, hopefully. 
So now when we run this, we should see we get a bit more droplet shaped. But they're still black, so I'll just quickly change them to blue, and then we've got a working rain simulator. <laughs> so just in the setup, we'll say stroke. Um, so what's a nice blue color? No red, maybe a little bit of green, and lots of blue, like that. There we go, rain. Ha! Huh. Now it might look a bit better if instead of having a hundred, we'll say in n equals two hundred. So now when we run this, we've got two hundred droplets all falling, and they're all falling at different rates at different positions on the screen, and so we've got rain. So thanks for watching this uh, coding challenge. If you enjoyed it, be sure to thumbs up and give a subscribe. Um, in the description down below, there will be the GitHub repository that's got the code for this and also a link to processing. So that's everything you need to get started doing stuff exactly like this. You can download processing, open this code, fiddle around with it, do whatever you want. Um, and there will also be a link to my website. And on that, you can vote for topics that you want to see in future coding challenges and also submit your own ideas. So be sure to check that out as well. So thanks for watching. Thank mm -hmm. you.